Welcome back to my series about some of the best adventures that can be had in North Wales. Over the next month or so, I'll be sharing with you the area's heritage, its natural beauty from plants to coastlines, roaring rivers and towering mountains. I'll share our quaint holiday cottage, grapple with the Welsh pronunciations and dapple in some of the local delicacies. In the last episode, I wandered in awe around the sprawling Bodnant Gardens as the Laburnum Arch was just days away from its peak and the rhododendrons were out in full blaze. Today, I'll be hitting a National Trust hiking trail going in search of a thundering gorge, a village with a sad past, and up into the hills to find remnants nodding back to the area's industrial past. If during the video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so that you can join me in my North Wales adventures. This morning I've come to Aberglaslin in Snowdonia National Park. It's a 5.7 mile round trip hike that is on the National Trust's website. They've also got a National Trust car park that we've been able to park in. It's predicting that it's going to take somewhere between about four and five hours and this should hopefully be quite a nice introduction to the National Park. We'll be able to build up our pace and our stamina so that we can hopefully climb some of the mountains towards the end of our week here. I've had my first casualty of the morning already. Uh, brand new water bladder never used before and filled it up at the cottage and in the time that it's taken just to drive to the car park it's already managed to leak all over my bag so I think I'm going to have to hike now with a bit of a wet back because there's nothing that I can really do about that so I'm just going to pop it into this carrier bag in the hope that if it does continue to leak during the hike um, it'll at least give me a little bit of protection but probably will explain why you might see me with a bit of a wet back as we go today. <laughs> Okay, machine, machine not in use. Uh, got our membership cards, but machine's not in use. I guess we can just park and hope we don't get a ticket. Casualty number two of the morning. Let's hope the rest of today's hike is gonna go a little bit better. Let's go. combined with the corners created by the gorge gives perfect living conditions for plants such as the ferns, mosses and river warts. So I'm pretty sure that we've now come away from the gorge because I think it's just flattened out to be the regular river. We had been told that it was supposed to be full of wildlife. So they said, try and keep your eyes out for things like kingfishers, salmon, dippers and otters, but we did not see any of them, unfortunately. But we are now walking alongside a train track. I'm not too sure if it's where the really picturesque steam train runs along. 
it'd be rather cool if that was to come steaming on by and then i think it's going to take us now into like different parts that look very very different to the gorge that we've just come out of <laughs> taken us along to the town of Beth Gillette. There's a little bit of history behind the name of this place so we're going to go on a slight detour off of the main trail to try and find a dog's grave where I'll share a little bit more of the story there. This here is a statue of the dog Gillette. Beth. B-E-D-D -D in Welsh is the grave and this is the grave of the dog Jalert. As the story goes, the Prince of North Wales in the 13th century loved his dog but also loved his son. At the time of when he was a baby, returned back from his hunt to find his dog Jalert covered in blood and he couldn't find his son anywhere and his son's bedroom had blood all over the walls and the cot and he assumed that it was the dog who had killed his son. In anger, he stabbed the dog with his sword and the dog's loud yelping then woke his son who was fast asleep elsewhere. When he then followed his son's cries, he found his son alive but with the dead wolf nearby. Turns out that Jella had actually killed the wolf who was trying to kill his own son and so the prince created this grave in memory of actually quite a heroic dog. We've come across this map and we started down at the bottom here and we've so far gone along the gorge and then out to sort of the open fields up to Bethlehem to up here. Um, we are going to do the really really big hike which goes follows the, the blue one all the way around but if you weren't fancying doing the rest of it there is the option to either come back on the green route following the river and then coming back sort of halfway through back the same way you came or you can take the pink route completely on the other side of the river and that links back almost to where we parked the car so there are some much easier routes to do as well. After leaving Beth Gillette, most of the walk has been along this single track road and whilst at first it does seem a little bit boring in comparison to the gorge that we started off with this morning it has actually been quite nice because you've got the beautiful stone built walls and there's a lot of moss growing on them there's been some farmers horses you've got some waterfalls off into the distance and some lovely cottages as well oh and not to forget the bluebells there's been a couple of meadows or meadows within woods where there's just been a swathe of bluebells which has been beautiful as well road has now pushed us off onto this footpath and my understanding is that it used to be quite treacherous I believe very very boggy and in recent years the National Trust has put a lot of work time effort and money into maintaining it into what we get to walk on now instead it's lunchtime and I'm absolutely starving so this morning we packed up some ham egg and salad sandwiches and we've got to this really really beautiful lake and I just think where better else to stop and refuel for a little bit so get munching. <laughs> From 
the lake shore is now a steady but a steep climb upwards and you've got the beautiful lake Dinas in the background I think that might be how you pronounce it and as legend has it the red dragon that you see pretty much everywhere but most notably on the Welsh flag supposedly lies in the depths of this lake And this path is still going upwards from the lake. At the start of the hike, I did question why the National Trust had called it challenging, but I suppose in comparison to most of the National Trust's trails, if we just circled back at Beth Gillette, then obviously comparing it to this where it's very, very uphill, yes, I get why this is challenging. And then that steep climb has just plateaued out in this section here and it feels like it's completely changed. It feels really, really dry. And even though, okay, I feel exhausted. I feel like I've hiked a mountain, I haven't. I've just gone ever so slightly uphill, but it really does feel now from the vegetation point of view, like we have properly come up the mountain. It's great. I love a hike that's really varied. saying that way but I want to go up there path this way just take a slight detour and hopefully if we go up there we might get a really good view of the valley over on that side having gone a little bit off piece to start to have to scramble a little bit and then we've come across this I can only assume that it must be an old mine for the copper mine and it looks ridiculously deep. Oh wow, that's quite a drop. <laughs> Okay, so the view was okay. You could see the waterfalls that we've been able to see as we were walking along from Beth Gillette to the lake. And you've also got quite a nice view of Beth Gillette. A little bit obstructed by, I suppose it's not very much of a peak, it's a bit more rounded up at the top here. Uh, still pleased I came up though. Straight after that style, I think it's just back down a valley and I think this is going to take us back to the car park. taken a little bit of a wrong turn at that road junction or path junction where we went over the other stile but I think we're back on the right track now. We have got to go down there to get down. You can probably just about see the footpath on the flat down there but this seems awfully steep and awfully rocky and um, we've heard a couple of times the whistle of the steam train I think it's like over on sort of the flat where you've got the farmers fields green pasture down there I've got a nasty suspicion though that we've just missed it because I think it was going in the other direction so I don't think we're going to wait up here I think we're going to slowly but surely try and tackle this beast <laughs> feeling a little bit bad because once we got off of that really perilous rock that you can probably see sort of a cliff behind um, a proper footpath came into view with some proper steps that had been put in place by I don't know whether it's the National Trust or someone else and there were quite a few people behind us who just saw that we'd gone that way down almost a sheer cliff face and they've all followed suit whoops <laughs> Pylons 
that we're now hiking back in amongst a leftover from an aerial tramway built in 1927. It was to take ore from much further up the hill down the valley. However, historical reports do indicate that it was quite a flawed system and quite often the buckets that were going up and down on the ropes would tip over, they would spill out the ore and some of them would fall off as well. There's a rather nice bench on the way back down towards the car park, so we're just gonna stop for a few minutes, just have a quick Nature Valley bar as a bit of a snack, as a bit of a pick-me-up because it is warm and it's it's not that it's unseasonably warm. This is about how hot it should be at this time of year, but it's been really unseasonably cold, and I think this has just been a bit of a shock to the, the system because it's been blue skies all day, and I think it's just taken it out of us a little bit, so a bit of a rest. We've made it back to the car and I'm absolutely cream crackered. I think combination of this having been a really rough half time for me at work where I've just not been getting out and exploring and exercising on the weekends means that I'm quite out of shape and quite unfit for coming on a holiday like this. And then when combined with the really, really warm weather, which again, my body's not used to, has really taken it out of me. Uh, I thought ahead, I did leave a banana in the car just that I had a little bit of a reward or something to keep me going keep me alert for the drive back to the cottage but it's been an absolutely stunning hike so much variety and i love hikes with lots of variety everything from the gorge at the start the village around well just before lunchtime the lake at lunchtime and then actually getting to go up into the hills and how the vegetation completely changed up there throwing the history with the dog and with their aerial tramway um I highly highly recommend this hike to anyone who might be coming to Snowdonia and looking for a walk to do.